left that one. How does that look? Looks good. I can't see the bottom of the slide. Can you guys see it? Oh uh, yeah, you're right. That is that is um hold on. Yep. I think it's the Zoom application actually. So maybe it is better if it is not full. That's it. Does that work? How does oh, that I think that, that that black bar drops down once you stop moving your 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 cursor. But I think this this works. Just want to welcome everyone that's coming into the meeting. Thank you for joining us. You're in the right spot. This is the uh, first public meeting for the Spot Palm Brook Greenway Feasibility Study. Okay, Ryan, we're live on YouTube, and you are the host. So I'm just going to uh, listen in. Perfect. Thank you, Ron. Yep. Hello, everyone. Again, you are in the right spot. This is the first public meeting for the Spot Palm Brook Greenway Feasibility Study. We are going to wait until six o'clock to allow people to join the meeting, uh, and then we will um, we will go live with the presentation. Thank you for joining us. So again, to those who are just joining us, uh, you are in the right location. Uh, this is the first public meeting uh, for the Spot Palm Burke Greenway Feasibility Study. Uh, today is uh, September 30th, 2020, and we'll be beginning sharply at 6 p.m. Welcome everyone. Uh, again, as, as you've heard, if you've been on the call for the last few minutes, uh, this is the Spot Palm Burke Greenway Feasibility Study Meeting 1. Um, it is September 30th, 2020, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, we are joined, and my name is Ryan O'Malley. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor here in Malden, Massachusetts. And we are joined by Pam and Kathleen from Shadley Associates. Uh, they are landscape architects who are working with the city uh, and they have a extensive history of working with the city. Um, and today we uh, will be presenting the uh, initial project discussion to, to start the discussion for this project. Uh, there will be a question and answer session at the end. So if you have any questions, if this is your first time using Zoom, uh, at the bottom of your screen, uh, you will see um, if you hover towards the middle, there should be two bubbles 
Uh, below that, it should say Q&A. And if you'd like to ask a question, just click on Q&A and you can type in your question there. Uh, we will have it on our end and we will be going through the questions uh, in the order in which they are received. Um, in addition to that, we will have a end of meeting survey, uh, which will go out and we are gonna use that to collect feedback from um, both everyone who's in attendance today and just the general public. Um, so with that, I think we can kick off, kick off the meeting. Welcome. So I think we'll go to the, the first slide um, that discusses the overall gist of what we're discussing today. Um, the Spot Pond, we're talking about the Spot Pond Brook Greenway and the Spot Pond Brook Greenway is a, um, a proposed project that uh, would utilize um, the existing corridor of the historic Spot Pond Brook as well as various infrastructure that goes through the area uh, today for the agenda, we have the introduction. Uh, we will go over a project summary. Uh, we will go over a public participation plan, which is really crucial to this project. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to have three meetings. Uh, we will discuss preliminary alternatives and we will have an open discussion as part of the Q&A session. So as an introduction to the project, um, the Spot Pond Brook Greenway is envisioned as a multi-use non-motorized path linking the Oak Grove neighborhood to downtown Malden, the Northern Strand Trail and the Malden River. Here you can see uh, the existing portion of the trail uh, in blue at the top uh, by, this, by Oak Grove. And then you will see the green is the uh, potential proposed location. Uh, the exact location is not known and that is one of the reasons why we're having this public engagement process. And it will link up with the yellow Malden River Greenway uh, and the orange Northern Strand Community Trail. A little history about the, the, the project and about the Spot Pond Brook. Um, it historically flowed through Malden and is part of a significant drainage area that feeds the Malden River. Um, here you'll see some uh, historic photographs and postcards uh, from Cordon Lee Park. Uh, this is showing the, the history here and the fact that this, uh, this stream or this brook once flowed through our community. It's now culverted. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, due to flooding and the expanding city, uh, the Spot Pond Brook was culverted or put into a large pipe in the early 1900s. Here you can see uh, photographs of actually what the, the top photograph is Oak Grove train station, that area. So you see the caption says, the Spot Pond Brook uh, looking north from Winter Street. Um, and you can see in the, the distance a smokestack. That is the second Converse uh, rubber factory uh, that is located still to this day on Washington Street in Melrose. Uh, the lower, um, lower right-hand photograph is the Spot Pond Brook um, at Winter Street going into the culvert. And on the left, you'll see a um, rather large pipe uh, which is related to a water main and other infrastructure done by the uh, Massachusetts Water Resource Authority. Speaking of the MWRA, uh, the MWRA owns a continuous easement, easement over the Spot Pond Brook drainage channel. Uh, this easement provides the opportunity for the Greenway as this corridor provides a linear connection between community destinations. Uh, on the right here, uh, you'll, you'll see uh, two lines. You'll see a yellow line and a green line. Uh, many people might actually uh, find it interesting to know that there are actually two culverts. Uh, there is a shallow culvert, which is the, the yellow line here. The, the shallow culvert runs along the historic route of the Spot Pond Brook. And there is a much deeper, uh, 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 deep or deep culvert, uh, which is what the green line is. And that does a direct connection from the um, opening culvert or the beginning of the culvert by Winter Street, by Oak Grove. Uh, and they both end uh, at the, uh, right near Anthony's on Canal Street. And you'll see that there is easements above the, both of those, um, those pathways. Um, we talk a bit about the uh, community uh, benefits of the Greenway 
one of the key things that is a benefit is the transportation uh, portion of that. It provides an alternate alternative to vehicular travel. It connects local destinations and will connect to a regional trail system used for commuting, safer routes, uh, and for safer routes to school. Uh, from health perspective, it provides fresh air, uh, space to be socially distant, and promotes healthy and active living. Uh, as we all know, since we have been co cooped up with uh, you know, COVID-19, uh, having places to recreate is really important, promotes health. And as you can see here, recreational opportunities are, are a huge part of this also. Uh, walking, cycling, rollerblading. Uh, and then there's also the environmental aspect. Provides natural beauty, promotes cleaner air and waterways. Uh, it helps stormwater management. It can be a source of community pride. I think that this uh, is going to be a great, a great, a great resource for our community. I will hand it off to to, to uh, Shadley to do the project summary. So I'm Pam Shadley, and as uh, Councilor O'Malley mentioned, I'm a landscape architect. I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is we're intending to do, what the scope of this project is. So you've seen this map already. You can see that this is generally the project area. Uh, on the north, we want to connect with both the uh, Oak Grove Transit Station and the uh, Spot Palm Brook Greenway that already exists. In what we're calling the middle section, we're going to go through Cotamore Lee Park, through Baldwin Center, and we're going to follow approximately the the root of the culverted brook. And then on the south, we want to connect to the Northern Strand Community Trail and the path along the Malden River. So on the next slide, um, it's a pretty impressive slide, I think. It's the, the green arrow shows the scope of this project. And when this project gets built, there will be a, an automatic connection to a huge network of greenways and bicycle routes. Some exist, some are under construction, but you could see that this is a critical connection to allow the Malden community access to these other uh, trails and networks. So um, a feasibility study. Um, what do we want to accomplish with this greenway? We want to, the greenway to be a continuous two-way corridor it must be paved and it must be universally accessible. We want it to accommodate multiple non-motorized users, pedestrians, bicyclists, strollers, joggers, everybody. We want it to be comfortable for everyone, no matter their age or their ability with amenities such as benches or bike racks and supporting signage so people can find their way around and make these connections. And we also want it to be vegetated. We want to uh, buffer, screen buffer the uh, um, abutters. We want to add shade. We want to add green and habitat. And uh, vegetation can also add a design cohesion throughout its corridor. So wh what exactly is the design team doing? Our scope is uh, a feasibility study. And what this should answer is how how do we get this project designed and built? And so to do a feasibility study, you move through very sequential chronological tasks. Um, and so I'm just gonna read under results. Um, we're gonna come up with a planning document that will guide future implementation. The very first thing we do is we do a site investigation. We have to know what's out there what are the conditions? What are the roadways? What are the plant material? Where's that right of way? Um, and this report has been completed and it is on the project website so you can read it. We're gonna come up with a recommended alignment and recommended materials. And with that, we can estimate construction costs. So our goal is to identify a preferred alignment and preferred materials. On the left, you can see there's the scope that I walked through again, but under study schedule, what I wanted to point out to you is that this is the first of three public meetings. So there will be multiple chances for the community to, to weigh in on our work as we make our way through this feasibility study process. We also want to acknowledge that there are other projects going on in Malden that have an impact to our work, two in particular. 
One is a planning project called Complete Streets Planning on this, the left image. And you can see it's looking at intersections, bike lanes, complete streets, meaning that everybody uses our streets, not just vehicles. Um, and so we're going to intersect our work with that work. The other project is the Dartmouth Street Construction Project, which is uh, well underway. And it is going to reconstruct Dartmouth Street, as you can see in the red line on the right image, uh, roadways, sidewalks, bike lanes. And we're going to intersect our work with that work as well. Back to you, Councillor. Thank you very much, Pam. Uh, so as was stated, you know, public participation is crucial to the success of this particular um, project, which is why we have dedicated having three meetings. Uh, and as you'll see here in, in meeting one, uh, the goal is to really involve the community. So that is what we, we really need here. So we are gonna, like I said, had a question and answer session at the end, and we're also gonna have a survey, uh, which we do ask that you, you respond to so we can get as much feedback as possible so that des the designers and the city uh, is able to design this to the specifications that this community would like to have. Uh, as part of that, as we stated, there will be the three public meetings. Uh, we have a dedicated landing page at the city of Malden. Uh, and, the, and, and I'm sure you all know, but just in case, uh, the, the website for that is www.cityofmalden.org slash spot palm brook greenway. Uh, and, and in addition to that, um, as we said, there's going to be a survey form to fill out. I'll hand it back off to Shadley for existing conditions of the project site. Hi everyone, my name is Kathleen Fasser and I am a landscape architect at Chadley Associates working with Pam on the project. We first want to talk about um, existing conditions in the study area. Starting with the site context, Pam walked through this a little bit before, but as you can see, the study area incorporates a lot of different types of spaces in your community. Starting at the north with Spot Palm Brook, you have two MBTA stations within the study area. In the center of the study area is the YMCA and post office. And at Florence Street, the senior center, there's also Cordomer Lee Park. In downtown, you have the MBTA station again, City Hall um, and Center Street, which then crosses over to the Northern Strand Community Bikeway and the DCR Trail at the Malden River. Within this study area, we want to start by understanding property ownership, which is going to be a large part of identifying where the greenway alignment can occur. So in this first step, we looked at MassGIS data and we've identified the following in this map. State-owned parcels are shown in pink. City-owned parcels are shown in blue. And then public utility easements are shown in green. Everything else that's not identified is privately owned uh, parcels and property with the exception of the roadways. So then it begs the question of what is the pu public way that we're calling within this project as the available space that could be considered for the potential greenway alignment. So some examples of the public way include those public utility easements that I mentioned and on the right, you can see the green line is the w MWRA easement. On the bottom in the blue is a city park that is Cordomerly Park. Another example of the public way that's very critical to this study are the roadway rights of way. And because this study area is so diverse, we want to get an idea of how much room is there and how much diversity is there in the size of the rights of way. So on our site walk, we took some field measurements and these are examples throughout this study area of the relative size of those spaces. Um, these are measurements taken from back of sidewalk to back of sidewalk. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it is all of the right of way. It could be more, in some cases it might be less. And then we have some examples here. The first is from Middle Street, just north of Pleasant Street, where the right of, where the space from back of curb to back of curb is between 27 to 28 feet. 
in, in comparison to Canal Street, which is north of Charles Street, um, which has about 50 foot feet of width between back of sidewalk to back of sidewalk with parking on both sides and very narrow sidewalks. And then when we start to look at Jackson Street, it's similarly about 50 to 52 feet, but you can see the difference is that they have 10 to 12 foot sidewalks. Whereas an example at Charles Street shows a space from back of sidewalk to back of sidewalk at 58 feet. So you can start to get a sense of the difference in scale in each of these roadway rights of way. And putting all of that information together between the rights of way, the city parks, and other city owned parcels and the public utility easements, you have the map that's shown on the right. All of that blue area contains the pub is a description of the public right of way, the public way that we're going to be looking at for the Greenway. And that brings us to the start of looking at preliminary alternatives. What we want to do at the start of this is to look back on the Greenway objectives that Pam described earlier in the presentation. The important things within those objectives that it's a two way corridor, that it's paved, that it's for multiple non motorized users, that it's comfortable for everyone with a sense of security, and that it's vegetated to the greatest extent practical. So when we're talking about a Greenway, and we talk about um, the width that we have available in certain spaces, we can start by saying, is that space large enough to accommodate those objectives? Or if it's a narrower right of way, which I showed in those examples, if it had reasonable interventions, it could accommodate those objectives. That may be the Greenway. Alternatively, or in, in uh, companion with that, are community connectors which means that the right of way might not be able to accommodate the green way, but it can accommodate complete streets with sidewalks and bike lanes that can connect to the greenway. Another important factor is how wide and what are the dimensional guidelines for trail design. There are several uh, places you can find this information, AASHTO, MassDOT, FHWA, MUTCD, there's lots of abbreviations starting with the manual on uniform traffic control devices, that has an identification of uh, the, the necessary requirements for signage and pavement markings for bicycle facilities. The Federal Highway Administration and the Massachusetts Department of Transportation both use the AASHTO guidelines. And the AASHTO guidelines are the most widely used for pedestrian bicycle facilities. And then on the right is a brief a chart of those um, standards, which we should, should meet for the Greenway. The first one is the width. It should be between 12 and 14 feet. That's multiple users in two directions. At the very least, the shoulder should be a minimum of two feet wide on each side. And if there are any objects along the sides of this path, whether it be fencing or trees, that needs to be offset a minimum of three feet. There are also clearance requirements and then design speeds and other um, requirements that are necessary when you start to engineer the, the trail itself. So with all of this information, we start to get a 50,000 foot view of what is possible. And this is sort of our tools in the toolbox. We can start to see in the green dash line where the full greenway objectives might be able to be met the blue dash line where we might need some intervention, purple dash lines might be community con connections, and then you'll also still see the northern strand is, is in the orange, the DCR Molten River path is the yellow, and up at the top in Cyan is Spot Pond Brook pathway that exists now. And this just gives us, starts to give us a platform within which we can study these alternatives. Additionally, as we move forward, and definitely want the community's input on both the alignments and then these details, which are the materials. For example, pavement can be done many different ways. First is um, shown in the upper left. It could be asphalt without any striping and with a lawn edge. That edge would be the two foot offset shoulder. Um, the second 
slot, uh, picture on the top right is shown asphalt with a striped center line. In this particular example, the two foot shoulder is colored. The bottom left shows a cement concrete pathway with the center line. And then the shoulder is paved as a running edge, which is um, presumed to be a flexible material. The bottom right shows asphalt pavers and a planted roadway buffer. Next is seating. There are many alternatives for seating, including tr traditional benches. You can have walls incorporated along the greenway, stone blocks to use as seating, or something custom and unique to this greenway. Bicycle racks could be anything from traditional new rack, but have, have a, a unique color, coil rack, something contemporary, or again, something custom and unique to the screenway. Very similar to lights. The top left is a traditional post top light. You can have a cane top light. And the bottom shows something simple and contemporary. For planting, it can be something as that simple lawn again perhaps shade trees with lawn or shade trees with a planted bed, but it could be a bias well or rain garden to provide more separation. And then it could also be naturalized plantings, which are uh, very good for buffer planting. And finally, and the last thing to think about is the potential to have signature features for this greenway, whether it be a crosswalk as shown in the upper left, where each time the greenway crosses a Malden road, it will have a unique crossing. Signage that can be totally um, customized for Malden. Custom features that could be spread out along the greenway or some type of cultural expression as you can see in the bottom right. And on the bottom left, you can see some um, interpretive trail signage that is currently being developed for the existing path. At this point, I'm gonna hand it back to Councillor O'Malley so we can start our open discussion. Uh, thank you, Kathleen, for that. Um, I, we we do so. So one of the things, as we said, it's really important to to engage the community and make sure that, that we involve the community. Um, so we do have a few questions uh, already. Uh, but if anyone else has any questions that they'd like to submit, uh, please click on the Q and A portion at the bottom of your screen uh, and submit questions, and we'll read them in the answer in which they have uh, they've been asked. Um, one of the questions that we did get um, earlier is about um, the the slide deck. Uh, we will be posting the slide deck on our um, the landing page, uh, which I mentioned earlier, www.cityofmalden.org slash Greenway. Uh, so after the meeting, if you'd like to, to look at that uh, and zoom in a little bit better, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, one of the questions that we have is, um, the question is, do we have any plan to um, uncover and restore the brook um, along the pathway. I think that, at least for me, I would love to see some daylighting of the brook in some in some crucial areas where you have the space for it. Um, I, I don't know if there, we have space for that in, in most of the spaces, um, but I, I think it is something that uh, it would be great for feedback in the survey portion. Um, so as we stated earlier, at the end of this, we will be having um, some questions uh, We'll be posting a survey, so please provide those uh, those questions, those that feedback if you'd like to have some like daylighting of the the brook. Um, and then the other question that we have so far is: um, Is there any chance we could have uh, we could consider multiple lanes in each direction to facilitate higher speeds, uh, commuters on bikes versus more leisurely users, people enjoying nature? Um, I don't know, I know that if there was a slide um, previously that was shown that had the aligned um, paved area and then a pay, uh, permeable um, asphalt on the side where people were running. Um, that, that isn't an option uh, in where the width I think would allow that. Um, so again, um, if you could please provide that feedback in, in the survey that will really help our designers and the city um, come up with a great plan that, um, addresses all of the um, design elements. It's, it's, okay, so we, it's asked that, that they are, that the questions are submitted in writing if possible. Um, 
So if well, I'm just going to get down to it going through here. Um, so one of the questions is um, if there are more than one plans, where is this going? Um, so I, I think that um, really what we're doing now is figuring out the exact route um, of this um, particular um, pathway. I know one of the, the concerns that I'm sure the residents have is if you live, if you abut these property, this, this potential uh, path, um, how does that impact the properties um, to the design team? Do we have any, any feedback when it comes to um, how people should anticipate this experience going uh, when it's coming through the neighborhood? Certainly, do you want me to take that, if, Councilor? If, if possible. All right, so at this point in time, when we're doing a feasibility study, it's very, very common for that to be one of the first questions, which is why Councilor O'Malley is bringing it up. And um, it's very typical, and it's something that's very important to the development of any greenway. Right now, because this is a feasibility study, we're at the point where we want to see where it can physically happen. And then as we move through the various design phases, the input from those abutters are going to become more and more important. And we, uh, it's very important as uh, we've been speaking about with the public input, those are your opportunities to talk about how that might happen, where we might need buffers um, and uh, alternatives of where the path alignment can happen. Thank you for that. Uh, again, I, I would I would reiterate that please please uh, fill out the survey to provide all of the feedback uh, regarding that. To, at the end, I think it would be very helpful for us to have. Um, the another question we have is: Are you suggesting that the greenway go directly through Quartermilly Park? Um, I believe that that is that is one of the uh, anticipated um, destinations along the path. Um, I do know that one of the things that we would want to do is make sure that there is appropriate signage to go slow during the, through the park. Um, but since the, the Spot Pond Brook does directly flow through that, uh, the plan is to have it go through Quartermilly. We think it's a great uh, resource and amenity along the path. Could I add to that, Councillor, is that our firm was the one that actually developed Cotamore Lee Park, including the Tai Chi Garden 10 years ago and the the gateway, the moon gate, and the playground. So, so if you were to go straight down the MWRA easement, it would be straight down the main walk. And so we have a safety concern for the kids that are going between the playground and the basketball court in that general area. So as we look at options through that area, we would looking, be looking at that option and how to mitigate it, as well as to go around the edge of the park, because we do need to get from the north end of the park to the south end of the park. So. Thank you for that. Um, this is a, a, uh, a comment and question from Mayor Gary Christensen. Uh, he says it looks great. And he is wondering uh, what the range of funding would be for the construction portion of the project and what estimated sources of funding. Um, so I, I don't know if we have the exact cost estimate um, because we don't know the exact location yet. We don't know what kind of amenities uh, we would include. Um, but in terms of uh, funding sources, um, I think that's actually a great question. Um, the way we were able to build the first section up by Oak Grove was through a grant from the Department of Conservation and Recreation uh, with the help of our legislative delegation, um, Senator Lewis, as well as uh, uh, Representative Altrino, Donato, and Broder at the time. Um, and we got a Mass Trails grant, which, allowed, which I believe the max you can get is 300,000. Um, and so we were able to get that, those funds to build that portion up there. Um, when I received, when I went to receive the grant on behalf of the city, um, I had kind of poked around and talked to people and learned that the Mass Trails grant program, um, they do like to do things in segments. Uh, and so there are a lot of uh, repeat uh, funders. So there's a, there's a way that potentially if we find a funding source, we could do this in one fell swoop. Uh, or we could do this as phases, how we've been doing it so far uh, by applying for various years of Mass Trails grants. Um, there are again questions about um, the fact that it would be going through um, the Clinton Vernon Street area 
uh, through the, uh, the public right of way. Um, there are some concerns about safety. Um, would we be able to talk about how we could make the path safer? Uh, whether that's potentially lighting uh, or other amenities? Potentially. Would you like me to jump in on that? If possible. Sure. Um, so safety is, again, number one question that we get when we're designing greenways. Very common and very important to ask about. Um, as with most parks, uh, many greenways um, are, uh, lit, are signed to be open from dawn to dusk. Um, so uh, lighting is handled in many different ways. In very urban areas, they are lit. Um, in less urban areas, they're not. Um, when we're near residences, we have to be very careful and sensitive about lighting, that there's cutoff lighting so that there isn't any glare into adjacent residences or businesses. Um, additionally, uh, other options include having um, uh, movement lights, floodlights that are triggered uh, when there's movement. Um, so there's several options. And this is, again, one of the most important things for you all to weigh in on when you're giving us your comments and feedback. And um, other things that we consider is maintenance um, and um, how they would be um, controlled. Another thing to um, tie that into is usually emergency call boxes along um, routes, particularly uh, when there's a great distance between a crossroad. Those are also usually included and connected to the local um, police or fire station. Thank you, and I, th and I think that really um, doves tell well into our next question. Is there a plan in place to help maintain privacy uh, for any homeowners who live adjacent to the path? Yep. That's a very tricky question. Um, and it's, again, very important. Um, so there are several uh, considerations. Your privacy to uh, adjacent residences is one of them, very important. Um, buffering those both from a perspective of the homeowner, but also from the, the user, the experience that a user is, uh, uh, has along the path um, is also something to consider. Uh, planted buffers usually help and is the softest way, but you can also do anything from fences to walls. Um, what's really important is to not create um, safety issues with any buffers, such as having planting to the effect that people could hide behind and also closing off um, with fencing or walls so that uh, emergency and safety vehicles can't get to somebody on the trail that might need help. So there's a wide range of options. And again, input is very, very important. Thank you. Um, the next question we have, uh, do you have any idea of the timeline from now until completion? Um, so of this planning process, the, the plan is to be complete by the end of the year. Uh, in terms of the final construction of the path, um, that is to be determined, uh, one, based on funding, and, and two, um, based on um, you know, the exact path and whether or not there are you know, particularly challenging in, uh, engineering um, feats that we need to, to do in order to make it possible. Um, it, it, is, it is going to be a multi-year process um, you will not see this completed um, within a year, uh, for sure. Um, the next question is about the uh, speed in which um, people use the trail. Um, there's some concern about uh, fast biking versus being able to walk leisurely along the path. Um, and there's concern about whether or not um, uh, people would feel comfortable uh, using the, the path if there were uh, fast bikers going through it. Um, and so uh, I think that that is part of the, 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 the design process that we're going through now. Uh, and I, and I, we, we have that noted here, but if you could also respond to the survey and provide more in-depth feedback, we'd really appreciate that. And I would add to that, Counselor, if I may, that there are some things that can be added to the details of a trail design. Um, that can help slow and ease uh, safety concerns, particularly whenever you have conflict of users. So the question is uh, asking about the conflict of the two users as they move parallel along the path, walkers versus bicycles. But then there's also conflicts with users when they cross roadways. 
Um, so some of the things to help are sometimes they're uh, included, um, I, I hesitate to call them rumble strips, but a change in material along the path to indicate to slow down before crossings. Sometimes the path has a slight curve before a crossing um, and other um, stop lines and visual cues for crossings. Um, additionally, as uh, Councillor O'Malley uh, noted before, there could be shoulders um, or there has actually been trails that have separate lanes for fast moving bicycles. Um, thank you. And I, and I, and I, I think that there, there's a general discussion about making sure that the city you know, is patrolling the, the, this path. You know, there's questions about safety issues and about whether or not people's quality of life would, would be impacted. Um, you know, I think that that is something that we take very seriously here in the city of Maldon. Um, as, as you know, our, our police station was actually relocated onto the, the Northern Strand Trail. Um, so I, I do believe that um, the city would be taking um, care when it comes to patrolling and making sure that the, the pathway is safe, whether, whether that is lighting, uh, whether or not that's planting, uh, as well as patrolling. Um, there is a, a statement and comment about uh, the daylighting of the brook. Um, is it they, The question is, um, daylighting the brook is a great idea, both environmentally and aesthetically. Um, otherwise, to call it the Spot Pond Brook Pathways uh, seems to be a misnomer uh, and a bit sad. Is it realistic and how much additional cost to open and remove the culvert? Um, I do not believe that there's any um, plan to necessarily remove the culvert. Uh, as we saw earlier, one of the reasons why the culvert was put in was to mitigate flooding that did occur upstream. Um, and I, I, so I do not believe it's possible to remove the entirety of the culvert, uh, but allowing for areas to be, to be daylighted, uh, that is probably a more, a more reasonable um, thing that could be possible. Uh, if I was to think of a location where it might be possible, I'm thinking uh, somewhere near um, on Dartmouth Street near the, the giant parking lot that is uh, on the other side of the, the uh, YMCA. You know, th that is a very wide area there. Uh, so potentially we could be daylighting the river in that area. Um, otherwise from that, otherwise north of that, it's a very, very uh, confined area. So it's probably not gonna be feasible to daylight it in its entirety. Um, how will street crossings be handled to stop traffic or yield users? All right, you want me to jump, jump in there, Councillor? If possible. Sure. So um, there's, again, several ways that can be handled. Um, one of the more interesting ones is that crosswalk I showed you earlier. Um, when it's very obvious that through the town where this trail is crossing because of some unique um, uh, whether it be the crosswalk painting or signage, that helps a lot. Um, alternatively, there are um, middle of the road uh, pylons that you can put in to help slow down vehicles, narrowing or necking down the roadway, um, having rumble strips on the road before they come to a crossing. Additionally, there should be um, signage leading up from the uh, vehicular way towards the trail to uh, let them know that there's a trail crossing up ahead, all the way to having the flashing beacons that are uh, pedestrian actuated on either side of the roadway so that they will go on when the uh, users hit the button before crossing the road. So there's a, a wide range of, op of options uh, that we can be looking at. Just to add, I think that the, the, how, we, how we design the crossings will, will be impacted greatly on where those crossings are. Uh, and whether or not they're in a downtown area or whether or not they're in more of a residential neighborhood. Exactly. Yep. There's a question about the restoration of the area around the Spot Pond Brook, um, such as removing fencing, et cetera, and planting. Um, uh, there, there, is, there is a plan to, to, to beautify this whole stretch uh, through landscape architecture, which would include uh, both fencing and plantings. Um, there's another question about uh, the path going through Port Emily. Um, I, I think that we've answered that one. Um, we are looking at various ways in which we can make this go through Port Emily in a safe manner. But there is no intent to move the playground or the basketball court or the uh, Tai Chi area. There's no intent to change that. Thank you for clarifying. 
Um, again, we, 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 I think believe answered this. Uh, we're a little bit delayed in, in answering the question. So I think we did talk about the, the, the funding. Uh, the goal is to apply uh, entirely for, for, for state grants where possible. Um, the fact that this would be linking um, other, you know, crucial um, in transportation infrastructure, uh, we may be able to qualify for additional grants that are not just specifically for the uh, trails. Uh, so one of the, the, the key things there is the fact that it's going to be connecting the Oak Grove MBTA station uh, to the uh, Malden Center MBTA station, as well as the Malden River Greenway and the uh, Northern Strand Trail. So we may be able to apply for what is called TIP, uh, Transportation Improvement Plan Funding, uh, which is controlled by, uh, MassDOT, by MassDOT. Uh, it is actually how we uh, funded the improvements uh, happening on Exchange Street. Um, any initial thoughts on potential routing on the sketch between Clinton and Winter Street? So I guess there's, there's questions specifically about the route between uh, Clinton and Winter Street. Uh, maybe you could just, maybe, maybe we should go into a little bit more depth about what, ex what exactly that situation is. Um, uh, from my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are, there's a number of utilities going through that, that corridor. Uh, we talked about a few of them earlier, uh, obviously the brook. Uh, there's also um, MWRA uh, sewer lines that go through there, uh, and there are portions of that property that are actually owned by the city of Malden. Um, uh, in terms of the initial thoughts, there appears to be a, a direct shot, uh, but we are still in the design phase, so there could always be a chance of it going uh, a, different, a different location based on the feedback that we receive. Uh, there's a question about being lit at night. Uh, we have not made that decision yet. That is one of the reasons why we are doing this uh, public engagement process. Um, so if you could please, please provide feedback um, on whether or not you are for it being lit or for against it being lit, that would really help us uh, understand how to design the, the, the project. Uh, there is a statement about where it exactly should start. Uh, whether or not it should start um, at, at Quartum Lee Park or whether it should start north of that. Um, we do actually have um, a portion of the path um, completed up by Oak Grove. Um, it was kind of a one-off and it's kind of what started this whole process. Um, and that was funded through the Mass Trails Grant. And that's directly uh, adjacent to the Spot Pond Brook uh, in between the uh, Banks Place as well as Spot Pond Brook. But please do respond to the survey and provide your feedback. It would be really helpful. Um, there is a um, statement of excitement, and they're hoping that uh, we can make sure that we consider safe crossings at Mountain Ave and Clif Clifton, um, already key, key bike routes between downtown and the West End, and also have plenty of bike parking in addition to re the rest of the spaces and water refill stations. Uh, and that was uh, Ward 3 Councilor Amanda Linehan who, who made that statement about uh, the potential to add uh, bike parking and having water refill stations along the path. Um, we have an additional uh, statement related to the privacy uh, and that is something that we are definitely hearing and we're going to make sure that we address that whether it's through uh, plantings as well as the, the path location. There's a question about um, the uh, green section, the, the, the right of way north of the park. Um, there, will, there will be, as we said, there will be three meetings and, and discussions about that. Uh, and we are, so as part of, one of the other reasons why this kind of was, was precipitated is that the um, Massachusetts uh, Water Resource Authority, who we've talked about a few times now, is actually gonna be relining their sewer lines that go through that entire area uh, and so one of the things we want to do is piggyback off of their project, um, if possible, which is why we're doing this planning process right now. Um, but there will be plenty of discussion related to um, how we get through um, the area between Winter Street and um, Mountain Ave. I believe that we answered this question. Um, 
the, there's a question about um, the CPA project. There's a proposed CPA project in Quartermilly Park uh, that would in, introduce uh, bio swales um, and rain gardens. Um, I believe that there's a possibility for us to incorporate that plan or at least not prohibit that plan, uh, but there has been no uh, movement on that project through the CPA at this point. I do not envision they're, they're, them being in conflict. Um, there's a question about the ability to see the presentation. So again, we're gonna post it online. So you'll be able to zoom in closer to, to see the maps, um, that, but the exact location is still not, to, not, uh, not set in stone. There's a question on whether or not the project has been approved um, and who is responsible for approving and what is the criteria. Um, that is, I think, a kind of an open-ended question. There are ver various um, bodies that would need to approve of this when it comes to funding, depending on what we apply for um, and depending on how the, the, the uh, property is used. Um, we can definitely take that as a follow-up. I, I don't want to I don't want to uh, misspeak. Um, so I think that that is a question that I'm going to take as a um, side note and we will make sure that we discuss that at future meetings in terms of what that process is. I'm just gonna put this over here. There are concerns being raised about the, the section of the path that go through the residential area that we discussed. Um, There's questions about the, the, the path and the easement and some agreements that were made between the, the property owners along the path in, in the city of Malden. This is, part of the, this is part of the due diligence that we need to do on our end to, to make sure that we understand all of those, um, those agreements and any, any stipulations that are on the easements. Um, what, what I would say is um, I do believe I have your contact info. Um, we can follow up directly uh, related to that, uh, but the more information that can be provided in the survey to point us in the right direction and make sure that we haven't missed anything is, is crucial. Uh, we understand the sensitivity of this um, and we want to make sure that we are respecting um, private property rights and making sure that this is a, an asset to the community um, and something that makes us proud. And I, and I, uh, and I do look forward to talking with you uh, further, Robert. Uh, there's a question about um, is a contra flow bike lane along Dartmouth Street under construction. Um, so separate from this project, but in the same project area, um, we have received a grant from the state um, to do a contra flow bike lane along Dartmouth Street. Um, and, and actually, uh, just prior to this meeting at four o'clock, the traffic commission met and did approve for the plan for Dartmouth Street. Um, so there, this will be part of that project. This will be in the same area. And this, that would probably be an example of what we're calling a community connector uh, because there is not necessarily enough space to make it a greenway, um, but future development or, or another, another pathway uh, could make it um, another connection that is more of a greenway. There's a question about whether it connects to the high school. Uh, luckily, um, it will connect to the high school once we make it to the Northern Strand Trail. Uh, so the Northern Strand Trail goes almost directly by the high school. Um, so it, it might be a little bit of a convoluted route if you went entirely on the path, um, but we are, we are viewing the community connectors and we do view the downtown as a whole. Um, so I, I know that we can kind of take that into consideration, uh, but it may be just beyond the project scope that we're designing for this. Uh, but there, if there was a desire to bike on a bike path to the high school uh, through this way, you would be able to do that when complete. Uh, there is questions about the lighting and whether or not it would create light pollution. That is something that we uh, are, are taking down and into consideration. Uh, again, please do fill out the survey. Uh, there's a question about uh, a rough estimate uh, for what the project would cost. Um, it, it, and then there was a, a statement about whether or not it's too early. I think we are too early to do a project cost estimate at this point. 
Uh, but as stated uh, before, we are looking to get state and federal grants down the road to make this possible. Um, so we, we've gone through all of the questions. Um, if there are any other questions that people would like to submit, I know we're getting close to that one hour mark. Um, please feel free to. Um, otherwise, please respond to the survey uh, and provide your feedback through there. And if you have any questions, uh, please ask them in there also so we can take them up at a, at a, future, uh, a future meeting. I think uh, we have a slide with the links on it, right? Uh, yes, so the, the, the link is actually live. So um, there's a question about where the survey is. Um, if you go to uh, the same website I've been saying, uh, www.cityofmalden.org slash Spot Palm Brook Greenway, uh, that is most likely where you signed up for this particular meeting. Uh, there you will see a link that uh, will allow you to answer the, the survey through a Google Doc. Um, just provide your email. Uh, you can provide your name if you like, uh, and then you can fill out the uh, questions that we have. Uh, and some of the things that we want you to think about when you are doing that, and these are actually the questions for the survey, is what are you hoping to accomplish? This, what are you hoping this project will accomplish? Uh, what do you particularly like about the Greenway? Uh, what are some of the concerns that you have about the Greenway? Uh, and we definitely want to hear about the concerns that you have for the Greenway. Um, and do you have any suggestions for the designers as the project moves forward? Uh, these, are, these are the questions. They're open-ended. You feel free to write as little or as much as you'd like. Um, and we do hope to get some active participation. Uh, just for the, the record, we had over 45 attendees today. Um, and uh, we are really happy with that, with that, with that attend attendance. Um, you know, I think for a public meeting, uh, it's, it's almost rare that we receive that many um, attendees. Um, so we are happy with, with, with the fact that people did show up tonight and are interested in the project. Um, with that, I do want to state that the survey is open until October 15th, uh, 14th, as you can see here. It will be open for two weeks. Um, looking forward to seeing your feedback. Um, any parting uh, words from, from Kathleen or Pam? No, other than to say, please fill out the survey because we take your responses very seriously and we will address them as we move forward with the design. Thank Again, you. My name is Ryan O'Malley. I'm the Ward for City Council. I really appreciate the attendance tonight. And I really appreciate that everyone came out. Uh, thank you, Shadley, for, for all your hard work here. Uh, thank you to the City of Malden for being supportive. Uh, Mayor Christensen, um, all of the at-large councilors, uh, City Engineer, Yen Lip, uh, as well as um, the uh, Chief of Staff, uh, Maria Louise in the Mayor's office. Uh, Ron Cochran, who helped us organize this. You know, it takes, it takes a village to pull off something like this. Uh, it's one of our first, you know, um, online Zoom community engagement processes, and we appreciate you making it a success. Um, thank you and, and have a great night. Night.